Welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. the third of the partners the padawan bitch up in this bitch and i'm trying to figure out which leaf i should actually roll up with and i'm, I'm along with face motherfucker what's that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i can't complain Good boss, I was happy. Well, okay. I'm good, matter of fact. I'm more than can't complain. I'm actually doing very well this week. Nothing but good news, doing some good positive strides, achieving oh, goals, yeah. doing some things I've been wanting to do for the past two years. So getting some shit done, man. He's been doing that shit, y'all. He really been doing that shit, y'all. That your week is going well. Uh, Pat, you, you say you you just figuring out your leaves. Yeah, I was figuring out my leaves and stuff. You know, one leaf is smaller than the other leaf, and I'm 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 debating on how much tree that I have left in the grinder to put together something while we uh we have these conversations. Right on, right and on. Not conversate the conversation. <clears throat> I guess uh, Pat is having some botany issues this week. You and, know? and I mean, and then um we had like a. I'm actually surprised I'm not tired. Well, I did take a little nap or whatever, but we, we had an action pack night last night, y'all. Pause. Oh. We're definitely in these streets. It was a great time. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, uh, we no. Home. Face, face looked like he making a serial uh, killer uh, <laughs> face right now. But let me explain. Uh, so, um, last night at uh, Cali Nights, the bar that I work with at pretty much the manage with uh, Lily and everything, uh, there was a college party. Um, and the past, I would say, two months, you know, after Christmas or whatever, after the New Year's and everything, it's been real slow club wise in general. You know, this is just that time of the year where nobody think about the club for real. <clears throat> Tell you the truth. So we won't expect in the turnout that we actually had. And I'm, it was people lined up on the outside. And this is before we even opened up. I had, had, we had to get security to tell everybody to get the fuck out the club so they could pat down security when he finally got there. But, yeah, it, it was packed. Packed like shit. Uh, one takeaway I had from it like that, I don't understand how I tell it or anybody else that we about who is legal and who not. These young ladies that are below eight and they're below twenty one, they look like they can. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, was, it was, it looked like I was in a room full of like children with makeup on and laugh. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know what people been thinking all these years, but these kids look like kids. So it was, it was very crazy. Mm-hmm. Luckily, I ain't running to any of my old students on the dance floor or nothing. You know, so that was a good thing. Um, they have been traumatizing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 It, it, but the thing is, though, he's not confused. He's openly out there looking for that particular look. Like, yeah, but we, I, you know what I mean? You know how the dudes be saying, you know, you got to check ID. You, you, no, you yeah. can't tell no more. These girls look No, nah, like, you can tell. No. Nah, you you can tell. And if you can't tell by face, have one they conversation. Just look, they just look like teenagers. Like, I don't know what people have been saying, but 
like those who say that don't want to see the difference. They don't. Those who say that aren't looking for it. Oh, you can't tell. No, nigga, you can tell if you looking. You not looking. That that's for those who ain't looking. Those for them, 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 them P files. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was a dope vibe, you know. It was better. You won't catch me in a room full of twenty one year olds and down. So it was cool to just be around a bunch of young folks and kind of soak up their little happy energy. They were very excited, so that was dope. Uh, very peaceful evening. Nobody had an altercation issue. It was just real smooth and smooth and out of it. Um, Shouts out to the security, uh, Mojo and Rome. Uh, mm-hmm. He always hold. They always hold us down at the club and whatnot. Indeed, indeed. Um, yeah, very nice. I got more. Uh, I, I'm having a beautiful day as well. Uh, today was a very, uh, <clears throat> very joyful day. Had a really dope vibe. Went to go see Cocaine Bear. Oh, bro. Uh, literally just getting home from that. Uh, can I just say, it it ain't no Scorsese, but it's damn sure a fun movie to watch. Like it's one of those movies that make you just have fun watching it. It ain't cinematically great. It ain't no great. Lot necessarily, but the way this bear was fucking people, yeah. To be honest, the movie is like a comedy. It, it, it's basically like a drug, like a action comedy almost. Because like most of the movie, like ninety percent of the movie is funny as fuck. Whether they intended it to be or whether they didn't, like they really <laughs> listen to the, the the absurdity of the situation. And when I say this bear is like the cocaine make gay this nigga Black Panther problem. This nigga, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's so all right. So the, it's very, it's a very gory movie. So it's in a lot of like Saw and Jason and that type of thing. Freddy Krueger, where it's like very gory. Is, like, is it like very, the Evil Dead? Like it's like a kind of like that, a like, comedy kinda, yeah, horror movie. But I say, yo, this bear fuck these people up in some of the most creative ways. <laughs> Like he Damn, turned, Yogi. He, he turned one. He turned the lady park ranger face into hamburger meat by throwing her. She was strapped to the gurney in the ambulance. He just threw the whole thing out of the moving car. Yeah, so she damn, literally Yogi. straight along the. the, the oh man, it's, it's if you into like gore and like creative ways to make shit get fucked up, it was some of the most creative mutilations I've seen. Hey, boo boo, bear is hilarious. Like, like when I tell you, the bear was like the most. Coke out, coke addict. I've ever seen mm. like the bear would pass out, and then somebody would have a brick somewhere near, or somebody would like accidentally Bricks. put a cocaine, and this motherfucker would just wake oh, up and like go in. Like, oh. That grizzly bear looked like a polar bear. The, the cocaine bear was a female, and the, and the cool the, the wild okay. movie to me is at the end they go into the cave trying to find this little lost little girl in the bear cave. Cocaine bear to took the whole duffel bag of coke and brought it into the baby bear. So the baby bears is in there getting high as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so now the whole family just added. Oh, where's child protective services when Yo, you need them? But I don't know what to call defects on this bear. <laughs> Child's protective services slash Peter. Uh, but definitely highly recommend this movie, man. Go see it if you can. It's one of the funniest, most fun movies I've seen in a long time. Uh, and it got my boy in it, uh, the black dude from the wire that was the uh senator. She, <laughs> nigga, oh man, yeah. in this shit. Funny, like, he he literally came in and stole the show. I gotta see this. Uh, definitely a highly recommended movie. Um, I think I'm gonna see three, three next. I kind of want to see that tomorrow, to be honest. I want to see uh, all them shows, yeah. So, uh some good movies to start yeah, the year. Off. Some movies out, but Cocaine Bear is definitely one of the ones. If you like to laugh, <laughs> if you like gore, if you like the absurd shit, go see. It. I, I, those are three. Those are three movies I want to see. I still, I still haven't seen Ant Man, Quantum Mania yet. Um, so I, that movie is fire. I know a lot of people been panning it. Ant Man, Quantum. I want you to see it so we can actually. Talk yeah. About I, it. The yeah. Of the MCU, the whole of the MCU no, I I no, I figured that because uh the person Jonathan Majors is playing Kang, they actually consider him now. Mind you, he's supposed to be a regular ass human. He's just 
from the future and technologically advanced, but he's technically more powerful than Thanos because he controls time. And Oh, okay. Yeah. I might have to goddamn re up my um re up my my full knowledge of like uh the council of games. Because all right, I'm a comic book nerd, but I am extra nerdy at the shit that I really like, like the X-Men shit. But to keep up because those worlds always intertwine and shit, I always keep up with everything else around the Marvel universe and other universes or whatever. So when they do come across a, a character like that, I know what the fuck going on pretty much but Kane the Conqueror like at first when I first like seen him as a character I thought it was the corniest goofiest shit in the world like his, his he had this big ass uh, aqua scuba gear helmet with a blue face and it's, it's with a purple helmet like this shit look goofy as hell like no nah, no nah, I, I already peeped I already yeah. peeped you know I already peeped so I, I just like I think I appreciate I love when they take shit like that where they take goofy looking characters to me and serious them out and modernize them to the point that oh I see what you did and you I, see what they did with Moda. I haven't seen You're that, that. I, I figured that I figured that <laughs> I figured it you know what you are going to laugh at his little buddy leg you no. know, like the, his little <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> when you see the movie, I don't. There's no other way I can say it that sentence. When you see the movie, it makes a lot more sense because you see the actual like the way they CGI this nigga body for Modoc. Like you see what I'm talking about, but there's no other way I, I could have said that. It was no Will <laughs> uh, version of I, that sentence. I'll put it this way. I, I'll put it this way. This is how I feel about Modoc. <laughs> like when I see it, I'm not I, nerd in me is not gonna like it, but also the nerd in me don't care about Modoc. So I'm not really gonna be pressed too hard on it. You don't like the look, but you will like the character. Yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. when you find he's out a who joke Modoc character. Is in, in the- like he's a joke character anyway. Like, serious. I mean, he do have his moments where they actually write him serious, and when he do, he he's a beast. No, he's a joke character. But yeah, he's his whole his whole character arc is him going from being a dick to not. Yeah, that sounds about. That's how they write him in the book. Even and he ended up being a dick again, all all over again. Pause. No, he... Oh well. No. Oh damn. Spoiler. Sorry, guys. I thought that. What? The, uh, let me get all these movies because I don't think it's been all. Hey, that bitch. I don't really give a goddamn about Modoc anyway. He's mm-hmm. always been a re- like, yeah. I'm I'm glad they did that. I'm not glad. I can't say I'm glad. I don't like when they kill off the villains because they do it too much or whatever. Yeah. So like, what we're gonna have left? You know what I'm Can I just say this? Mm-hmm. I'm really loving what's going on with since they reopened the movies. Like, I feel like it's a really good time for like actually going to the movies again. Mm-hmm. Uh. I feel like the movies that are coming out are really dope. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. Like I feel like it's a lot of good options out there. There's even one movie uh, that while trying to figure out what I was going to see today uh, that I actually came across called Operation Fortune or something like that. Mm, I think I that should even look good with Jason Statham and Aubrey Park. Oh, it's Jason Statham. Oh, okay, we good. Yeah, it's Jason Statham and Aubrey Park. Oh, it's I love like, Aubrey Park. Like, right. It's like oh, two... that's my little white girl crush. Oh, I love you just know that no, you know, I, you, I know it's why. It's just I know it's why. Like the sense is a little bit tweaked. Oh. It's gonna be some pinky shit. A little bit tweaked. Out and, all that kind of yeah, and not the, the kinky some, shit that you gonna some, some, hate. Some, uh, you some you some like what the fuck? The bed, it's the kinky shit that you go like you enjoy. Makes it a good time. Like, Look back. Grab Look balls. Like balls. Grab balls up my dick like that. Yeah. Nah. Uh, what what'd you say? <laughs> oh, I thought he said crack. I was like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> no, don't crack shit on me. Uh, right. nigga, I'm not in the pain. I'm not in the pain, nigga. No, 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 no,
really feeling the, the movies that are out and the ones that are like slated to be coming out in the very near future. So like, if you are a movie buff, like us, you really into like cinema. This is a great time to get back outside and get off Netflix and actually go to the theater, sit down at movies. So, Find you a nice little shawty, you know, to go to the movies with. <laughs> And you know what I'm saying? Just have a little movie date. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't usually talk like that, but it sounds like I said it like that. But since we already talk about taking people on dates and everything, it looks like this is a perfect segue into your topic, please. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So just talking to old ass niggas and watching young niggas, um, oh. I figured I'd bring this to the pod. I don't... So we're going to talk old school tricking versus new school simping. Um, is there a difference? If it is, what is it? Um, me, me, first and foremost, I see old school tricking as just basically pay for play, even straight money, straight cash, just for the activity of, of sex or sexual acts, straight up. Um, basically, I'm paying you to leave. Basically, trick, yeah. You feel me? You, these old, these, when, you, this, what you see when you see the old niggas driving up and down the block looking for the shorty on the corner. Uh, how much you get? You feel me? Tricking. You feel me? The, now, the PC way of saying it's sex worker. That's the PC. Yeah. Way no, see, the sex worker is the, actual, the worker. I'm talking about the dude paying. That's tricking. Okay. Well, no, 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 no I'm talking about the, when he said whore. I ain't about to be PC about no whore. Oh, <laughs> only, <laughs> only, only I'll battery on your back. Is this yeah, all? If you was in that line of work, you are, you are on the other side of the game. You don't get no sense. You, you suck know. dick for a living, ma'am. You're a whore. <laughs> <laughs> now, this, this this new school sipping shit. Flying motherfuckers out, not getting no play. You go on and do all this extra stuff, giving money for stuff, all with the hopes and expectations and, and assumptions of you may and might get some, get friends on and all this other stuff. Um, I, I see downfalls and pitfalls on both, but I'm thinking the, the old school, they, they're getting right to the point. And these new school niggas ain't getting nothing at all. So. Is there a, di- a true difference or more than what I'm seeing? The actual outcome. That's the difference. The actual outcome is the difference. Because in old school, they're actually getting what they want out of the transaction. Mm-hmm. And not only that, they don't got to go through all the loopholes and shit that the, the new today's simping has to go through. See, the whole the goals are the same. The goals is pussy. Those are the goals, right? Okay. Old school tricking or whatever, they pay the money, they get it, and they go. There's no, they don't have, they ain't wasting no time. They're not wasting no gas. I mean, if they are wasting the gas, they already calculated that into the the, the money for the night and everything. With with new school simping, you don't know what they expect. Even if you planned out everything, you don't know what they expect at all. You know what I'm saying? You might as well, the, for the things that they want to do, they might as well do old school trick and find them an escort. But they're doing this with women that are not escorts. They're doing this with women that just consider themselves maybe Instagram model, model, this, that, and the third. And the woman, you know, like, oh, shit, I get a free Dubai trip out your dumb ass. Do you, you, ain't do you think? No more than, than just the fucking DMs. Or whatever. Do you think that these new school niggas are viewing these new insta insta thoughts um and what they're doing as in in the new light with the old school dudes saw in the as you say street workers, but in a new form, that's why they're over simping or or putting themselves out there to put be put in these situations where they're simping to an extreme and still not getting shit. Is that the reason why these new school niggas are seeing and and, and got, us, got us all fucked up? For real, for real. Like to tell you the truth, that's that's where the the, the PC world has a guy that so so you get used to certain things or mm-hmm. whatever. That's why that term sex worker or early or whatever. You get used to certain things. I'm not a person to judge anybody like I'm definitely not a person. You hey, get it how you live. I'll I 
I am never the person to judge anybody's life because who the fuck am I or whatever. But you can't do things. It's what we was talking about last week. Words have meaning. You can't just take a word. You can't just take an action or whatever that everybody has already learned and agreed that this is that action and then try to change it into something else and change the meaning or whatever. Now, I say all that to say this is that There just is no is no real benefit out of it. Then, um, if you're just doing it, like, all right, I'm chilling with someone because I'm gonna be out here anyway, and you just want some company or whatever. All right, okay, you can do that with friends and shit like that. But if you're doing it with the same intent in mind as old school tricking, where you're gonna get pussy or you know a relationship out of it or whatever. And she has not shown any type of interest or whatever. Yeah, it's like no point of that, like at all. Like you need to just like refocus and do you. You need to focus on you, King. Focus on you. All right. So I'm a I'm a kind of take it this route. I think that freaking is simple to say. So like whatever you call in that spending money on pussy these days, it's the same thing with spending money on pussy. Okay? It's mm. all tricky. Uh, I think that the biggest difference though between now and then is then everybody in the transaction <clears throat> kept it transactional and treated it as if it was face to face. Right? Mm-hmm. I think the biggest shift that we've seen over the years is people now. They're not, they're they're falling for these. So like they're liking the one that they're mm. paying. So now I'm I'm willing to allow you to not give me no pussy. And I'm willing to pay for this. So I'm, I'm willing to allow and like I'm trying to hang out with you. And now I want to, you know, like we're white, like they wiping the hole, like or trying to wipe the hole. So now it's a. I'm simply more because it's different when I'm spending forty dollars for the night to get some pussy from somebody that knows that they getting forty dollars to give you the pussy if we all agree to it. That's that. As opposed to what's going on now is now I'm trying to date this girl. So now I'm treating her as spending money on her that I would spend on my wife. Like I'm giving her the gift that I would spend on my boo. But she ain't fulfilling the full boo role. She still just mm-hmm. a whore. Mm-hmm. So that's where you see the game <clears throat> getting fucked up because now mm-hmm. You got whores being empowered past the mo- past the point of like, oh, this was I'm doing. Now they not trying to fuck. They just trying to get the bag. So it's like the economy shift because niggas. The only thing that really changed is the niggas started liking. It. Mm-hmm. Like they like the whole, it's not the, the not the wife, not the girls that was like worthy of that that showed that they you know like that respected themselves. But no, like niggas is wife in the broad that is the. The work, the sex work. They, they, they essentially. Uh, when I look at simps, I look at them the same way I look at the woman that goes after the dude that know he ain't shit, or or whatever, but still has that Stockholm syndrome to stay with him. Like no. you know, you not, you know, you ain't gonna go further in this relationship as other than transactional. But in your yeah, because just because you are not used to that, you haven't you haven't been outside enough to know how to talk to someone because you be on the internet all the fucking time, and and matter of fact, the way you met her was on the internet and, and things like that. So you you're not accustomed to actually being out there and 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 having a normal conversation and a normal relationship with someone outside of a fucking screen. On your phone. Now, I would say this. You got those people, right? Like, when they kind of fall in with the attention. But then I also think, too, there's a mislabeling of some sometimes nowadays. So, like, you might have a dude that thought he was in a relationship with a girl because every conversation, every interaction, all signs and everything around it, the woman was indicating that they tried to be faithful to this dude, and then he ended up being called himself because she ends up, he ends up finding out she's a hoe. But that wasn't like him pursuing a, a known hoe. It was like, 
this woman presented something to the dude, and the mm-hmm. dude just got played. Mm-hmm. So that's not being a tip to me. That's no. like no, I don't. Basically, that. got got uh, emotionally, catched. yeah, emotionally and mentally catched. Like mm-hmm. the, the, you, it wasn't. It ain't. I like that. Emotional damage. Mentally yeah, catched. Right. I like that. Emotional damage. <laughs> like uh, cut that right here. You're a real bitch. Uh, but it's like. I feel like there's a different, like some people these days call being a pimp what is actually being you just got played and thought you was in a relationship, so you was treated like that. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think that's simple to have your wife and you buying her gifts and you taking her places. Yeah, like, to me, that you're showing love to your your best friend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, that's, love. that's yeah. how you show her love. I find it a problem when you're doing to put the mislabeling. Yeah, is a big issue. Well, it's not many. I've seen it for a a big issue, and then I still think that it also goes back to like niggas is out here loving the whole. So now they're turning it into stupid and tricking more than it should be. Like, like the act of tricking ain't necessarily like tricking ain't bad. And tricking is a transactional agreement between the sex worker and the man that's getting sex. That don't that makes sense. That's normal. That's a bit. It's just a name for the bitch. What makes it simple though is when you out here liking this bitch and you trying to carry things. You try to hold this bitch hand in public and take her out on the town. And you trying to do all of these things that you would do with a woman that your wife. And but this ain't your wife, nigga. This ain't your boo. This is this is a woman that has is known to be for the streets. The streets. You know she for the streets. So now you she's for the avenue. Simping ain't nothing new. It's just what they used to call Pull-a-ball. when you trying to you trying to turn a hole into a house like being a captain favor. It's all that stuff. Avenue bitches out here. Oh, this bitch ain't in front of the street and you trying to take her out, but you know that she don't want to be out. She wants she wanna be out. These guys are greedy. They're greedy. They want they want the the fantasy of the porn star every day with their wife. So they think they're gonna do they'd be able to get that from the girl. That they're simping over. That's what that's what's going on. They, they, Nigga, she don't really look like that. They ain't her real face. They ain't her real ass. They ain't her real eyes. They ain't her real eyebrow. They ain't her real hair. They ain't her real lips. They may not be her real uh, her real shape, nigga. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled, brothers. <laughs> it's it's called <laughs> bitch look like your girl from I will get you fucked. <laughs> It's is willing um is willful ignorance. It's willful <laughs> ignorance. They chose this life. This is the life they chose. Don't make me hop after you. <laughs> this is the life they chose, man. That's what they want. That's what they get. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I got to take my last question on the topic. Is it really tricking? If you got it? Cause they always say it ain't tricking if you got it. Now they just did that just tricking to either way. To, it's just tricking either way to me. You got it. You don't got it. It's still tricking. Because if you don't got it, you can't trick anyway. It's tricking either way. It's just dumbass tricking if you ain't got it. Because now you done lost on a bill to go do this dumb shit, and you could have just you know hung out with Palmers and kept your money and actually been able to handle your responsibilities like. All tricking if you it ain't tricking if you got it mean is that I ain't gonna hurt from this trick. It ain't yeah, gonna set me that's back. It. My lifestyle don't change after I do this trick. Like this, it becomes like it's a frivolous expense. It's like going to buy a bag of chips from the store. Like the it's tax right off. It's going away money anyway. So I'm good. That's the all tax right off from the streets. But it's still <laughs> tricking. Yeah. Now it ain't simping so much for me. Usually people are in a situation where they're tricking because they got it like that. They know what's up. They usually. Have a very good and clear understanding of the woman they dealing with, like that, what her situation. Like, no, nah, she for the streets. I know this. I'm not about to the go other way. I'm just, giving, you know, if I do she's get the streets, man, because I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Now there are rich simps though, because you got Diddy and niggas like that that be out here buying these bitches Birkin bags and all this shit just because they whores. Like, mm-hmm. no, nah, nigga, pay for your sex and get the fuck on. Why are you giving this bitch lavish gifts that you could have been giving to your kids? Or that's when it becomes simple to get. See, that's where it now gets you iffy. Have value that's, that's where it gets iffy because 
you can't even think that you could have gave to your kids because he might be making so much that whatever the kids want, they're gonna have it anyway. You know what? I'm a number. Yeah. I'm mm. not giving. I'm not. That shit away for the grandkids, nigga. When you give <clears throat> resources outside of the family, mm-hmm. it better be a good ass reason. It better be somebody that got potential to become part of the family. My mental That's my opinion. Like, if I'm going to spend money on a year, it should be because I feel like you got potential to be around for a long time. So it's an investment almost. It's like I'm looking out for my homie. It's almost like if I, uh, if, uh, you know what I'm saying, all the buddies go out or whatever and Jules and True and forget their wallet and I buy them food real quick. That ain't, you know what I mean? It's like I'm looking out for my homie at that point because this is a person that's going to be in my life for a long time. So it's like I don't mind doing that for people yeah. I'm close to. But, that should be the only time you spend the money outside of the family. Other than that, if I'm giving money outside of the household to this bitch that's for the street, the street, what the fuck am I doing? I don't throwing know. your money in the street. You're either a bill or an investment. That's that, that you gotta be. You either a bill or an investment in this life. And I get something out of an investment and a bill. I'm paying for a service with a bill. I'm getting a return on my investment if I invest. If you ain't giving me no return on nothing, now it's, that's when it becomes what they talk about when they start calling you something and you doing just like you ain't getting shit back. It's mm-hmm. just you dishing out. Everything is going out. There's no, there's no uh, the pop. It's just parents in their relationship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's how you do it. Tricking is a mutually beneficial relationship with. Simping is a parasitic relationship. There you oh, go. Look at that word. Oh, we got there definitions go. on this it's bitch. Oh, oh Webster Dictionary on this bitch. A bridge. Like, everything is going down to those two concepts. When you talk about interpersonal relationships or interpersonal communication, all of it comes down to like, is this interaction with this person parasitic, parasitic or symbiotic? If it's parasitic, you're already knowing that somebody in this is getting drained, so you fuck. And that's when it becomes a, a negative connotation or the negative word or the negative term or negative label. You usually get those more healthy labels and positive connotations when you got a situation where all parties involved are receiving. So, you know what I mean? It got to be, but that's life, though. Like, everything got to give and take. Like, the trees give back to the earth because the earth gives to the trees. You see what I'm saying? Like shit is that mm-hmm. fucking everything always so the gives trees give back to these take anything that's just taken is usually something that ruins that whole ecosystem. It's the cut zoo that come through and choke out all of the other plant life. Mm-hmm. About to choke you know off the plant and life. And right ruins now. the soil, so you can't even plant shit in that little spot for a minute. Like it, it's it's those type of things. And that's all that it is. You either you either a, a semi-audio creature or you parasitic. And I think a lot of times what happens is these tricks start fucking with what is essentially a creature that can only be semiotic if you keep the transaction. If a whole if a whole if you stop treating a hole like a hole, now it's parasitic because you ain't getting shit from this whole world. Now you now the sex ain't even worth it. Mm. Now there's no equal value coming back. Now you start looking too. I am um, I like that. In my opinion. Tricking uh, symbiotic, simping, parasitic. Now this leads me to a nature situation. Yeah, yeah. But so in keeping with the talk of life. Different types of interpersonal relationships. And are you being symbiotic to a group or are you being parasitic? Recently, they uh, they coming for your boy Chris mm. uh, after he got released this new special. Let's uh, not read. Uh, basically, I guess he had a conversation or a comedy set of film where he was talking about uh, how his property value in his neighborhood has went down to for black people to move in. And he's talking about a certain type of black person. You know, that's like, you know, like that conversation with niggas versus black people. But he made that comment. And then also they're saying that on his next new special, mm-hmm. that he's kind of going at black.
black people kind of make this stuff like as if he was separate from the black community for a lot. Now, I, I had who is Chris Rock? Word. Chris yeah, Rock. I yeah. hadn't heard the sellout word ever being thrown to him, but it did. The conversation around that kind of led me to thinking about this. Uh, first of all, do y'all agree that Chris Rock is, a, is selling out based off of him saying stuff like, you know, the profit value going down based on black people? And him, why or why not? And then the bigger question I kind of wanted to ask is, what is or at what point is it that our celebrities can go can cross that threshold from being just a beloved celebrity to now, oh, now you're a sellout? What is that triggering event or um, possible? Now, I'll take a stab at this first. Now, as far as him being a sellout, would this, would this come he said similar to the same joke and many other of his past comedy specials. Um, many affluent black people say the same thing. Um, don't nobody want niggas in your neighborhood because niggas bring nigga shit. I don't want niggas in my neighborhood and I ain't rich for shit. I just don't want nigga shit around me. Niggas bring nigga shit. You feel me? I don't care. Me personally, I don't care what color nigga you are. You can be a white nigga. You can be an Asian nigga. You can be a Russian nigga. You can be a black nigga. I don't like niggas around me because niggas bring ignorant nigga shit with them. And I personally have moved away from that. I, I've grown and, and matured away from nigga activities. I once upon a time was a nigga myself and did nigga shit. I used to go to grocery stores with my headphones on purposely just so I can sing out loud and annoy motherfuckers and wait for somebody to say some shit so I can act ignorant. And some nigga shit. I was one of the people that the just messed up the fucking party. Nigga shit. So I understand nigga shit, but I don't want to be around niggas. Um, so no, those comments don't make him a sellout. Um, him chucking and jiving in front of other white comedians and, and giving the okay to talk down on or just say the nigga say nigga with, with no no nothing that and a boy makes him sell out to me because my boy Jerome refused to say it. I'm not okay. See the reason to use the comedy. I don't. And Jerome Seinfeld don't use the the the, the n word or nigga. I'm, I'm no, fuck that n word shit. It's, it's a word and it's in a dictionary. So, nigga, um, he at a certain point when you get to a certain financial level, it, it's not about your culture no more. It's not about assimilating with that culture, I guess, to certain people. It's assimilating to the tax bracket you're in. And you got to understand that. But the masses don't understand it because the masses are in that same financial bracket or in that same financial situation or in his shoes or be or have the ability to pick up, move into a new neighborhood and be like, you know what? I don't want certain things around me. And if people are aware of his comedy and his comedy, his comedy specials from when he started, once he started getting big, he's been saying the same thing. And Dave Chappelle has said the same thing. It's mm-hmm. and so it's these new people are all sensitive and want to make everything issue and all the divide lines when you talk about black people. Fuck that. Let a motherfucker have his opinion. Get off your shit and stop giving a fuck about everybody's opinion. Oh, he said something about black people. Niggas been talking about niggas since niggas was born. Since nigga was a thing, they've been talking about us. And I put it like this, like my grandma used to tell me, they talked about Jesus, baby. Is you better than Jesus? No. So shut the fuck up and do what you got to do. Move on. Stop being so damn emotional. Stop enter. What, 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 what do people say? What, stop. Um, what, what's the shit when you take it? Take some shit. Stop internalizing this shit. Everything ain't about so such these big issues people want to make it out about. Now, as far as when two motherfuckers sell out, when they start chucking and jabbing, when, when you're just doing anything just for the loot, just for just for 
that other just for especially just for the white going against your principles. I never wear a dress. And then a year later they got you wearing a dress and you're doing it proudly, smiling and doing whatever you're doing. I'll never do this. And you go ahead just because they did okay, need you to do this. I'll do it, okay. That's selling out. You're going against everything, every hill you choose to stand on, you 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 jumping right off of because somebody, a specific race or a specific sector people ask you to or want you to. And you going against everything you stood up, believed in, especially when you stand up and believe something for your actual culture. That's what that's a seller. And see me of those in in the in the media now, but ain't nobody trying to call them out. We focusing on other motherfuckers just he got because he got the newest comedy special. What was nigga saying this shit? Shit when he got slapped. The same jokes has been out there, but it was spoken. Now I actually did uh went ahead and watched the um the whole special. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm, I thought you uh, actually taught me when I was watching it one time, and um. I'll, it's a lot of stuff I'm probably going to pick it back off face or whatever. So this is what I think is the problem with Chris Rock or whatever. I think Chris Rock on the low is scary. Let me explain. Um, one, also, I think Chris Rock is just, he's still, he's just formulaic right now. Like he's doing the same. He's a one trick pony and he's doing the same trick over and over again. This is the same way he's been joking for the past 20, 30 some odd years or whatever. The, the problem is this. The jokes that you would normally say around just your family as a black person, uh, uh, other black people or whatever, he's saying this to white people. That's the problem. That's that's it. He's catering his jokes so white people will understand the joke, but it's not a joke for white people. It's a joke for black people. And that's his problem because his fan base is white now. He's around he's around that part of comedy that that dry humor type comedy. Right. Even though originally he's not dry humor. Originally, he's not dry humor at all. He's just now a whole around a whole bunch of comedians that's probably want to feed off of him. Good lord, that's a lot of money. Yeah, they want to feed off of him. So um that's that's the reason that's the reason why he's like getting into that culture pretty much. So now the whole thing is is this. Um how how are you going to change up your comedy or whatever so it doesn't come across like you're you're talking down to black folk pretty much because you're doing jokes that you should only do with just black folk around white folk and the, uh, the other problem is that he is like you said face he's seen with other like white comedians and they're saying black jokes Right. And even if the black jokes may actually be truthful at a sense, you get what I'm saying? You have no right to say it. Like, who are you? You're not invited. I don't give a fuck what anybody say. Ain't none of y'all invited to the cookout. Some of y'all, some of y'all, y'all want to say the word nigga so bad. You want to be down so bad. You 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 feel like it's a violation of your constitutional right to say free speech does not say in the n word. That that's that's the problem. But no, you don't have that right. You have abused the word. The problem back when like what I said with Chris Rock is basically that he's saying these things and then. And then some of it, like some of the jokes he was comparing um, when he was talking about Meghan Merkel or whatever, 
Right. I, I the thing about it is that joke I actually fuck with. Like I understand where he's coming from with that. He's saying that Me Meghan Merkel, where have you been the whole time? Like the royal family been racist. Racism stems from that family. Period. That's where it comes from. It starts off with their classism <laughs> and it stems from that. So where were you? You know what I'm saying? You're using you're using your selective outrage at this moment that's what he that's what he calls the the actual special or whatever the problem with that joke is when he switched and he talks about when Meghan Merkel was like they wanted to know what color the baby was going to be and they were that into it which I get her I would be like the fuck you mean what color the baby's going to be you already know what the fuck I look like and what he looked like what the fuck you mean you know like I understand where she's coming from that but you should already expect that from them. Then the, the the problem is when Chris, he compares it. He's like, black people want to know what the color of the baby look like also when they first come out. I mean, which is truthful, but once again, that's a joke. That's just for black folk. You know what I'm saying? Like, he compares it and then he goes into all right, you they want to know if there's a Stephon Curry or a Draymond. He say Draymond Green. You know, uh, I think so. A Draymond Green because he did like, and then it's the way he he exaggerates on it because you know Draymond Green is black, 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 black. Chris Rock got this tendency to say the same phrase like five times in a row, like you didn't get it the first time. Like Beyonce is beautiful. Beyonce is beautiful. Be Chris, we've been knowing that for the past fucking 20 years of her career. You get to the point. You get what I'm saying? I feel like that's a, like a stutter. Like he's trying to remember the joke right then and there. So he keeps saying the same phrase over and over again until he gets to remember the rest of the joke, pretty much. But that's the part. Like it, it's like you're saying these jokes which would normally be okay around black folk because they're extreme black jokes around white folk. And you're catering the joke, preparing the joke to deliver to white folk. And that's where they get off on it. Like at, at the same time, I really, my only gripe about it is, is I felt like his jokes were a little dry. They were like very, very like it was some jokes that just hit. And then there's some jokes is like they're dry. And it's like it's like we waited a year for this. Y'all made this shit all secret service for this. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not Chris Rock will always be funny. You're going to get some laughs out of this at all. I got some laughs out of it, but it wasn't like I, I'm spoiled by Dave Chappelle. It's like he tried to be the nice Dave Chappelle. Even the trans joke wasn't like, like he tried to do a trans joke, but it wasn't funny at all. It was like, you know, I like trans people. There's benefits of being with a trans person. Like when it's a football game, they could tell you about the past or some shit like that, like a conversion or some shit like that. I'm like, really, dude? Really? Like any person could have thought of that joke like which one of your white friends tried to slide that joke in for like th that that's my only gripe so i really don't me personally i don't feel like he's a sellout i just feel like the position he's in he needs to he needs to read the room a lot more and and so he don't be in these situations where he looks like the sellout Okay. Uh, okay. I, when it comes to Chris Rock, I I don't see him as a sellout. Uh, I definitely, I, I think that, uh, like I said, he's done. This has been his thing for time. Um, as long as I can remember him doing special, the only special that might have been different was his very, very, very first. One. But ever since Bigger and Blacker, his specials have been about either family life and husband and wife politics mm -hmm. or race politics. 
and he usually takes the stance of I don't want to be around niggas. I don't like a certain type of black folks because they don't fit with our community. His political stance, as far as like the things he gives to charity or the you know unity outreach he does, it usually lines up along with that same line. So like it makes sense. Like it's not like he's done something different. And I think uh, Faye said something earlier that was real key. I think you can't be a sellout unless you do something that goes against your own personal moral code. Yeah. So, like, if you come into a game believing certain shit, like, this is how I move, this is what I believe to be good and bad and right and wrong, mm-hmm. and then you start doing the wrong just for the check. The shit that you don't believe in that doesn't fit with you that you didn't even want to do, but you just doing it for the check. That's when it's coming out. Now you're literally selling your spirit in that sense all of us can be a sellout because we're always doing something that we do not want to do for a check but some type of way so like for me i don't want to work but working hard is part of my like having a strong work ethic and working hard that's true is yeah thing. yeah so even if i don't want to work i'm gonna go to work and do my best when i'm there because i it's the right thing. It's more, more, more. It's when more I'm like talk, when I'm, I'm talking about you know, I don't believe in having sex before marriage, and then I am willing to have sex to get this money. I'm selling out, or I don't believe in eating pork, but I'm gonna go and eat this bacon and sell this bacon sandwich to people on this commercial as an act, or you know, and. and now I'm selling out. So I'm going against what I believe. Or like Faith even said with the common thread of black men in dresses. I never will wear a dress. And then you see I'm um, um, I'm in little mama called three. Look like Jeffrey. You know Jeffrey. So it's, 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 I think it's a real strong time for like your integrity that makes you be a sellout. I think that's what defines you being a sellout is like when you hit the point where you're willing to do something that goes against your moral code just for the money, how many million does it take for you to cook? Sell out category. Where 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 do the million where do the price stop? Where what is the price that is need to be given for you to cool? That's that's an individual question. Mm-hmm. For me, it ain't no price. Like, I don't want to cook. So if I gotta do cooling to do it, I'm good. But then there's other things I'm willing to do to get the job done. Cooling ain't one of us. We like shit ain't one of us. Uh, cult like shit ain't one of us. Uh, blindly following somebody ain't one of us. Like, it, it's what you personally believe. Because it may be. Me to say it's a situation that I'm not. Okay, how much you pay me? I'm not. I'm not doing. It. I, I would rather be poor. And another person might come right beside me and be like, "Oh, that's enough. I'll do it." So I think it really depends on the individual. But I think as far as the price goes, you should never have any price that costs you your attention. Mm-hmm. Like no money should ever be worth because you can't get that back. You can make money. If you lose money, make you can money, make money, money, money again. There's ways to do it. There's no way to get your integrity back once you lost it. No, you fuck that up. Mm-hmm. You gotta have it to lose it. What's a lame? Always a lame. Make money, 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 money. But those people who are you got to have it to lose it. But those people who are now, those people who are known to not have it anyway, it's because they're not doing it when they get a test. So, you know what I mean? It, 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 your integrity get compromised. Fuck. <clears throat> That's true. Well, uh, we can't fuck up bad intent. But I really do It's our last thing. And y'all know what time it is. Episode 120. What time is it? Oh, oh, really? Oh, so 120, 120. Yes, that's right. We had 120, 21 at the what? 20 at the 100. Good at fuck around. Oh, 
show like how I did. Burr, 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 burr. It made me look like a puppet or some shit. So I ain't gonna never do that shit again. <laughs> Episode one twenty. That's twenty after one hundred. That's twenty episodes. Third year, season three. Good and fuckery. We in here. We in here. Good and fuckery. Now you know. Well, you know, since we're talking about, you know, selling out and then black folks selling out to the white folks and whatnot, uh, I thought I'd give a good reminder on why you shouldn't sell out and what they really think about you on this episode of Fuckery. Um, now, I like to start comic strip, comic books is something near and dear to my heart because I, I love to draw. You know what I'm saying? You know, Peanuts. You know, that one joke, Curtis, probably, or Ray Billinger. Uh, Billingley, I think it's Billingley. But his, his first name is Ray. I know it. I apologize. You're you, you a Facebook friend. You know, that's one part of my life. One of them comic strips in the newspaper was the comic strip of Dilbert. I thought it's sarcastic um, jokes about office life. Even though I never lived, worked in the office, at that time, a little bit hilarious, you know. It kind of reminds you of the office, the show, you know, right? But uh sometimes there's always a separation from the art and the artists, you know, like whether we hate it or not, you know, R. Kelly made great music, but we we don't like the shit that he did. Let me finish this speech by saying that. The, I brought up Dilbert because the creator of the Dilbert comic, he basically says some bullshit about us black folk or whatever. He said that if most, basically if most black folk hate white folk, then we're a hate group and white folk should just stay away from us. That's basically what he said. And he... Do, he, we, do both of us hate no. <clears throat> like, is that a fact or what? No, we just hate the shit that was done to us. We we hate the we hate shit like this. I, we hate that they have a hate for us. Oh, or whatever. I can't even what we say we hate. That sparked this for him that made him go to this conclusion. Um, I think this is a, a another example of why people say that some men shouldn't have podcasts. Some, uh, so yeah, I think he, he even that. Not only that, I think it was like a it, YouTube, he has a YouTube channel or whatever. He just kept rating, and, and the thing is that he his his sources and his stats and references because you know as men in this YouTube uh po- podcast uh sphere of uh, that we're in this market that we in, we love. To debate with stats in general, or uh, even if you are a man and you an emotional man, you know if you debate other men with stats, the problem is when you get your stats from biased sources and not things that have um, have been how I say sourced through science and actual fact. And things like that, like a let's say a conservative, um, a conservative uh, outlet itself. Uh, they call it the Ramison Report. They said that fifty-three percent of Black Americans agree- report? say Rasmus. Rasmus. Uh, Rasmus. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know Rasmussen. Rasmussen. <laughs> R A S M U S S E N. Okay, report. Fuck them anyway. They can serve. I don't know if I got the shit. Rasputin. 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 That's all I got. There. Yeah. Yeah. Beard. Pause. Yeah, yeah. But um, he said, well, basically, they had a poll about. Um, they asked black Americans 
what is there's a, anything wrong with the phrase it's okay to be a white person i, I believe that let me go back to it. it is it it's okay to be white right um 53 percent of us said it's okay um 26 percent of us was like no and it was like the other 24 percent of us was like not sure they won't show what the question was referencing and and the in the actual phrase and the, and the actual phrase i got a, like an echo or something i think i don't know but the actual phrase or whatever has actually been used as a a phrase in like white supremacist rhetoric or whatever like it's it's weird because they have like these phrases that you would think are just common motherfucking phrases but when you really get into like they use these common motherfucking phrases as like white supremacist rhetoric or whatever and mm -hmm. and this one of them it's okay to be white because they have that belief that that it's like a replacement theory that the white race is going to be replaced or basically fucked out of existence or whatever, unless they do something about it, or whatever. So, um, with them, with, it's okay to be um, white is probably their equivalent to Black Lives Matter. In a reverse, in a verse thing, because, you know, we all know Black Lives Matter is not really trying to cause violence, but, you know, can't be said about the opposite group or what but he used that 26 and 24 percentage to say if it's pretty much half of black america think it's not okay to be white then we that is a a hate statement so they're a hate group so white people should stay away from them neglecting the fact that maybe some of us know that y'all use that phrase to for you know white supremacist rhetoric and also neglecting the fact that we're not sure about that because we don't know when you coming up to somebody off or to the street and they just come up to you and be like is there anything wrong with the phrase it's okay to be white you thinking like all right are you, are you you playing games with me? What are you doing? You know what I'm saying? All right, I'm gonna just say not sure and go about my business that way. Then no, I ain't. You can't. You know what I'm saying? This person can't say they're mad at me. This person can't say they're mad at me. But either this person or whatever, uh, Scott Adams or whatever has an actual problem with it, saying that hey, if you're not sure about that, if you're not sure about white being right, then we have to stay away from you. I was. Well, it comes with that. I, you got the right to say it. But I do think that like that's a large leap to go through from like people being unsure and then a minority of the people and that they feel you know, like it's a problem. For them to jump all the way somewhere, oh black people are hate group and you care hate group. What black person is harmed to that's that, that then I can See, understand. If, if he was robbed by a group of black people, or robbed black people came and forced his house, and did some fucked up shit to him. At least I can understand. Like, all right, you got a logical, true way to like feel this way. But I'm like, this, this black person See, you? I don't know, this, are you mad at a pole, or you gonna have a? He feel, I feel like he's one of them people. He's one of the white people that's never been around black people. Period. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. They actually exist. We're 13 percent mm -hmm. of the population. There is places where they will. There's some white people that will never encounter a black person in their life. Put that into play. Put that into play. Virginia alone. As the the one main thing that I've noticed since I've came down here to Atlanta is that it is so many black people in one place 
compared to where I was from, where I would see w- about, I would negate, not saying Portsmouth or whatever, but if you go to Chesapeake and you go to Virginia Beach or whatever, like the population of black people that you would see would be reversed with white people in that area. And then you'll see some black people. You know what I'm saying? That alone can just give me, I mean, I know there's some neighborhoods in those areas in Chesapeake and Virginia Beach where there's just no black people that live there. Period. So it's not to say that they might not encounter them in maybe a store or something like encounter us, I should say, in a store or anything. But there's just some place. There's some people that's just they will never experience being around a black person. So their only experience is through media. And the problem with media is they do not have a good track record of portraying black people at all. Now that is. Uh, we definitely often get portrayed as either Tyler Perry um, or Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. But, um, yeah. So, I'm going to end this off with, well, fuck you, Scott Adams. I draw better than you anyway. I really do. Um, kiss my ass. And um, every black person in the world's ass. Yes. And look, hey, stay the fuck away from us. We don't want you near us anyway. It's nothing I can learn from you because I draw better than you anyway. And that's the end of that one. So let's move along to Mexico. All right. Um, in Mexico, all right, um, y'all know there was a situation with some Americans. <laughs> Or uh, man, I'm I'm sorry for laughing in this serious matter, but some Americans was actually kidnapped um, in Mexico, um, and in response, well, America, of course, suspected the cartel, and in response, the cartel has actually written a letter of apology, uh, saying that there was a bunch of reckless people and they apologized for the situation. Uh, basically, they did not want that smoke. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> right back a corporate letter to some shit. Oh, so my apologies for you know mistaking these people this story for you know kidnapping father. Our apologies. We have some really data for you. They basically corporate America, America. Yeah, that's some good shit, yo. Like all back at the government, like yeah, you know. Not bad. You okay? Mm-hmm. That's fucking terrible. Um, oh, they are like as I'm not sure if they were all uh, all white folks from black folks. Uh, and so, uh, blessings and condolences to the lost. Amen. And um, let me just leave it at that. We'll travel from Mexico. Over to an epicenter of fuckery, Florida. That'll do it. Florida. Every yes. time. Good old yeah. flow rap. Um, this is just a funny one. Um, this um uh, this stripper was arrested for basically assaulting a, a man with a big wad of cash. Yes, he got arrested for that. Evidently, the uh, person that she assaulted was a security guard that worked there who was over there talking to another female co-worker. Um, it also turned out that that particular stripper had any, some type of relation with that said security guard. And this is crazy that I, I, I would, we would actually have an actual news report with a stripper beating some a security guard with money getting arrested for it. Mm, 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 I didn't know you could actually get arrested for that. Mm, I mean, I could, so. Oh, but yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And um, this last one, I was back of money. Right. I have 
I'll tell you this. At least it wasn't quarter. She turned the, the damn tables on that motherfucker. Oh, that's crap. Make it rain, bitch. <laughs> like, that's some gangster shit. I, I'll say that, but I don't understand why. You gotta be that, that angry. Don't come to work. Look what supposed to be a place to be. Mm-hmm. All involved. Supposed to be. Supposed to be. That's what's supposed to be. That goes to say it hasn't been any encounters of war in a strip club. Encounters of war in the strip club. Is it supposed to be a place of peace? It's supposed to be Switzerland. And you know, it's also a place with egos. That's also a place where he goes. Oh, I like what you did there. They often play the Migos. <laughs> <laughs> and then me go, she go, we go. I don't know what's left. Yeah. 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 One place I ain't going. Is this, is this one particular Instagram that this motherfucking governor got caught on? Is Lieutenant Governor. This is uh, this go along with what we would say what would be a sellout. This anti-gay governor has been caught in a gay thirst trap, giving emojis, compliments, and all kinds. He 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 just was in um was it Tennessee? Let me make sure. Let me make sure well, I got anti-gay, but all of the students start over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, my life. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. The movie, uh, these, uh, if you want to see who's gay in the world, just see who's like professing way too hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna be that. Mm-hmm. Most dudes that just straight don't even think about gay shit, or they even like come back. Like, oh, that cost him. Like, no, we can move along, doing our own little thing. The fact that he, uh, let's see, Republican Lieutenant Governor. Randy McNally. Rand, like the book, like Randy McNally. Rand, Randy, Randy McNally. Oh, yeah, that's like the uh, textbook. Oh shit! <laughs> that is like the textbook. I remember those shits. Oh yeah, it's the, the ones with the you know, little shiny. Ass, some thick ass dictionary <clears throat> made by Randy McNally. When you was little, and you did like second, third grade, and the teacher make you write a definition or something, write a page in the dictionary. Like, that's, that's what I see. You ran the town. This is the biggest part. Yo, this, uh, I'm trying to find like the, um, they had like a, a statement put out against it, but it was, it was like the most crazy. Uh, the woke media is going against. Lieutenant Governor McNally saying that, <clears throat> but he's really just um, talking to one of his constituents, and 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 this is just him talking and giving out to the people. Mind you, this is a, a governor that banned um, like drag um, events. So now he's just out here mm-hmm. I. Oh, Give your truth, people. Stop, stop lying. Like, if you're going to be what you're going to be, you be. But don't be out here. Because it's going to come out. Yes, yeah, he's giving. Now, he's on he's his. Here, man, me. He, he's on his blue check Instagram. His official government Instagram. Saying this. Multiple comments in the same picture. And when I tell you this dude look like this dude look like the KFC colonel. This nigga. He look like what, what's the nickname, man? This is gonna be a slobber knocker. Jim oh, Ross. Jim Ross. He looked like Jim Ross. <laughs> Tennessee, Tennessee. He's a lieutenant governor of Tennessee. Oh, 
talk about right though. They do that weird shit out there. They always do a lot of shit. And I noticed that a lot of them Bible Belt dudes that be extra hella Christian and want to send people to them little camps and shit to try to gay away them. Like a lot of them be the ones that end up coming out with these gay fans and like again. You want to find out who gays protesting it too much. Like this again, most straight dudes don't care about the gay. Like it ain't something that bothers us, it don't affect our life. So we over here not even think about it. Some dudes that be like, Oh, we must eradicate. Why? What who you bother, you who you in the you? search bar looking what for that shit? Dude fucking with you because ain't nobody fucking with me. I'm chilling. You in the search bar looking for that shit. That's all I'm saying. You, you, yeah, man, you mad yeah. because you can't yeah. stop yourself from putting your putting you that shit in that up. search bar yeah. and like looking that. at that shit. Yeah. That's you, bitch. That's you, bitch. You, this the life you cho- you chose. Hey, this- life you chose. Mm-hmm. And then, and, and in life, you know, you gotta, you just gotta go with the flow of things. You gotta trust life. So I've, as I was saying with Tiz earlier. Sometimes you just got to put your back against the wind. Back against the winds of life and just let it fly. So that you got to do, man. Life is a lot easier that way. <laughs> if you put your back against the winds of life, you will win in life. Yeah. I'm bust down, Jim. Now, if you put your back against the wind of life and that shit turns into a tornado and shit, then maybe you should just be jumping on tornadoes. That's you, all right? That's that your fault. Fuck up That's you. Man. You the one that wanted to jump on that tornado with the blue check and expose yourself to the world. That's you. Tornado. It's Damn, always like sit your ass down. It's always old people that just don't get the internet. They get caught in this shit. Like you know, you you shouldn't even be on the fucking internet. Don't give your money to a Nigerian person. Yeah. What the fuck? It is. It is crazy. It, it. But um, yeah, that concludes. This week's good and fuck with episode 120. 100. If you happen to enjoy that good and fuck with it, make sure you give this podcast out to other people who may enjoy it. Make sure you like it on all platforms that you listen to. Make sure that you are commenting, commenting, commenting. Conversations are what we all about. So make sure you join on. And then, you know, if you want to give us some money, you can go to Cash App, Dollar Sign Party Tears One. Or you can go to BuyMeACoffee.com and donate for as little as a dollar at BuyMeACoffee.com backslash the partner. You can also sign up for a monthly membership to help support us and just become a monthly supporter over at Spotify for $4.99 per month. You can get there real easy by going to acre.fm backslash the hyphen partner. If they, if they want to give us money and get some back, what they going to do? Go to the damn stuff. Damn. Artreclothing.com. Once again, that's rtreclothing.com, A-R-T-R-E, clothing.com. And no, over here at the Partners Podcast, we don't spell the clothing. Google that Unfollow. shit. Or, or unfollow us. Yeah. Be no dummy over here. Google that shit. Yeah, right. Nah. They Google that shit. I ain't going to keep in touch with us, man. Shit, you can actually Google us. At sign T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. That's at sign T-H-E-P-O-D-N-A-S. That is the Instagram. That is the Twitter. That's the Twitch. That's the TikTok. I even had to ask what's next on this time. I actually said all of them. And this time, next time, also, Facebook. Tis Face Pat on the pot. Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, oh, I got a black biz. Right quick. You got food from them yesterday. Drop it. Um, offic- at, um, on Instagram is at sign official chef red. That's at sign official chef red. And on Facebook, chef C H E F red. 
R E D. That's wings in the city, man. Put that shit on everything like Frank Ray Hot. That shit is good. And he's a fellow Capricorn. December twenty eighth. Big Capricorn. December twenty eighth. Oh, he's writing for OB. Yeah. Writing right in the line. You know what I'm saying? How do we know? Girl, people. I don't know if y'all realize. Young you know. boy ain't number 25 and if got a business. If you ain't got on the pod squad train, at least you know <clears> the Capricorn train. Because I'm telling you, man, we kicking ass out here in these streets. So uh, be fucking with us, man, because we fuck with y'all. And, you know, as always, man, I done been one third of the party. That's your boy, the kid. And I've been along with. Nigga just did the damn robot shit. <laughs> oh, one second. Oh, um, this is the other third of the partners, yo. This is the Padawan, a collection of stardust and sarcasm and um fuckery. <laughs> what? <laughs> Created into a human as the other third of the partners, the Padawan. And I have been along with. I'm a little tipsy y'all. Man, space in the place, man. We don't want this damn race once again, man. Uh, thank you for coming. You could have been anywhere else, but you was here with us. Uh, pause on that statement. But I don't know what the stardust and the galactic flowers are, but yeah. I said sarcasm. I said fucking sarcasm. I don't know about star, star orgasms either. I didn't know stars had orgasms. Come from the earth, those hits from stardust. Yeah, because you got this goddamn voice on my shit. Good night, y'all. Peace, motherfucker. Happy y'all. How yours sound like this nigga? Got yours a little bit, but your voice sound like your voice. Like, that's it, my voice. Peace, motherfucker.